apps lead server locally for development. Right here, we are on the GitHub repo. I'm going to be leaving a link to the repo page so that you can easily clone this. And you can see that we have the AppSmith repository open. So the first thing I want to do would be to clone this project. So I'm just going to copy the HTTPS um, link to clone this project. And I'll open this up in a terminal window. So right here, I am in a directory I want to clone this into. If you have your terminal opened up in a different directory, you may want to navigate to the directory you want this project to leave. And since I'm here in this directory, I'm just going to clone it by using the git clone command and then paste in the URL I copied from the GitHub repo. So I already have this cloned and that is why I'm getting um, this message telling me that I already have this cloned. But if you do not have this folder cloned, Git would go on to download it and clone it to your local um, computer. So since I already have this cloned, I'm just going to cd into this. So it's cd into AppSmith. And here you see I have the AppSmith um, repository opened. The next thing I want to do would be to navigate to the server directory because that is the focus of this video. So I'm going to cd into app forward slash server. And right here, I am in the server directory. So to get things going, you need to have a few things set up. The first is that you need to have um, Java set up. So I'll be leaving links in the description to help you set up Java. The next thing you want to have set up is Maven. Please make sure you have Java and Maven set up. And you also need to have a running MongoDB instance and Redis instance. I'll be leaving links in the description to help you set up all of this. So as you mean you have all of that set up, um, the next thing I want to do would be to generate classes by running the Maven compile command. So I'm just going to paste that in here. All right, when that's done, the next thing you want to do would be to make a copy of the environment variables. So this would be in the env's um, folder. So you need to do that with the cp command, env, and this would be dev.env, for example. So you just want to make a copy here and call it the .env, and that will make a local copy of the environment variables. All right, so the next and the final step would be to build the server. And you can do that using the build.sh script. So this will be build.sh. And running this would build the project up. But in some cases, you may want to pass in the environment variables into the build script just in case they are not picked up by default. So to do that, I am just going to delete all of this and paste in the environment variables um, I need to pass in. So you see that we have the regular build script. All we are doing is just passing the environment variables that are required. I'm passing the AppSmith um, MongoDB URL as an environment variable. I'm doing the same for Redis also, as you can see here. Then I'm passing um, a flag to disable mail. I'm also passing an environment variable for the encryption password and salt. And then I am running the build script. So let's hit this. And it is asking me for my password. And then this will go ahead to run the build script, passing in those environment variables, and we should see the server built and ready to go. All right, so we can see that the um, application has been built and we have a success message right here. So the next thing we can do is to start off the server by running the start script. So this is going to be script start dev server.sh and that is going to start off the spring server. So let's give this some time to start up and then we'll continue from there. Awesome. So now we have the AppSmith server running locally. As a bonus step, I'd like to show you how to set up AppSmith server using IntelliJ IDE. You have to have the IDE installed on your computer. And the next thing you want to do would be to install the env file plugin. So I'm going to be leaving a link to this plugin in the description so that you can have all of this installed. Yes, and this is the plugin you need to get. So let's open up um, the IDE. And here we have the IDE open. So because we already have everything cloned, we would need to open this up. So let's click on the open and then navigate to uh, the directory where we have our AppSmith server. So this is inside my sandbox folder. We have the AppSmith repo. 
and then we have the server folder so i'm just going to click on ok and we have this opening up so let's give this some time to open up all right so we have our project opened up um here uh, the only thing we want to modify here is the um, run command so head over to the run options and click on edit configuration let's bring this in right here and we want to ma make sure that we have the working directory set to the afternoon server if you have this set to something else you can click on the file and navigate to where the afternoon server is and lastly you also want to um, enable environment variable files and just in case the environment variables are not automatically picked up what you can do is to paste them in right here where it says environment variables so i'm just going to paste them and then you can uh, make them comma separated these are the same environment variables we used while running the build script so we can uh, just make all of them comma separated yeah and that's all you need to do so i can click on apply and okay and we have everything set up so you can go on to build this using the IDE and browse the files and work on the code as you normally would all right so this is how to set up AppSuite server locally if you found this video helpful please leave a like get subscribed and i'll see you in the next video take care bye